Hi guys, it's Sam from Creatively Sam's and today I'm making pin cushions out of cat food cans or tuna cans, whatever you have on hand. This is a really easy project. It's so useful. I've had a pin cushion in my sewing room for as long as I can remember. The oldest one that I have in there right now is 10 years old and it was the first one I ever made. So if you want to see how to do this, stay tuned. It's coming up next. What you need is empty cat food or tuna cans. And make sure you scrub them out very well. Okay, what you need is a can, tuna or cat food can, SOS pad, Stones, I got these at the Dollar Tree. Flat back marbles, I got those at the Dollar Tree. Fiber fill, that's from one of those $2.50 pillows from Walmart. Fabric rem remnants, I got this at Walmart. And it's got the four different designs for $3.97. You need Ribbons, trims, pearls, beads, laces. You need a scrap of shelf liner. You need techy glue and a hot glue gun. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is draw around the can onto the shelf liner. And the shelf liner isn't absolutely necessary for this, but it keeps the pin cushion from sliding all over your desk because it's got that rubbery back. And if this should rust, it's not going to get on your desk. So what I'm going to do is, now that I have the circle cut out, I'm going to cut about that far away and notch it. Okay, there are two sides to this shelf liner. One is really rough and it grabs. The other one is really smooth. So you want the smooth side up and you're just going to put a little bit of glue on every other one. See what I'm doing here? Sorry if I was out of focus. Okay, and then once you have those two up, you're going to bring the one in the middle up. And you're going to repeat that all the way around until the whole bottom is covered. And if you have one of these handy helpers from Plaid, it makes it a whole lot easier because all you do is push it up and it sticks. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is put some of these Dollar Tree rocks in the bottom. And I'm using hot glue to start with. But when hot glue gets cold and tin cans really pick up the temperature, I'm going to be putting some tacky glue over top. And that keeps them from moving around. Okay, I've got the stones glued in. And I'm just going to take some of the tacky glue and schmooze it all around. And this is going to take a while to dry 
so we can set that aside. But the reason that you put the stones in there is to weigh the bottom down so that when you're grabbing your pins, it doesn't tip over easily. And I have been making these for oh, more years than I can even tell you. And they hold up really well. I mean, I have some that have got to be 10 years old. And these make nice gifts, especially for the sewer that you know. I don't know if you can see the hot glue already started loosening up on this one here. So that's why I'm using the tacky glue on top. And it'll sink down in between the stones and keep them permanent. Okay. And there's another one that loosened up. You can always go back in with some hot glue to try and keep that where it is. But the tacky glue is going to do the majority of the work. All right, this is going to have to sit for a while to dry. And I guess we can get started on the topper. And normally tacky glue isn't this thick. This is an old bottle, but like I said, I'm using up all my stuff, and I do have a full bottle in the cupboard, so I figured it was best to use this up. Okay, I'm going to cut a circle out about twice the size of this, and be back when I'm done. Okay, what I did was fold this in fourths, and I'm just going to round off this point. Because this circle does not have to be perfect, because it's going to be underneath. Okay, in the center of this, I'm going to put a good handful of the fiber fill right in the center in an SOS pad. And the reason that I use an SOS pad is because the steel wool sharpens your needles and your pins as they go in and out. And that's a trick I learned in home ec back in the 60s. So then I'm going to get a needle and thread and I'm going to do a running stitch all the way around. And I'm going to use upholstery thread because it's so sturdy. For those of you that have never seen me do a running stitch before, all you do is take your needle and thread and knot it at the end Or should I say at the very beginning of where you're starting? And you just go in and out. And like I said, this is going to be underneath. You are never going to see it, unless you take it apart, so it doesn't have to be neat. And after you have the running stitch done, all you do is pull and gather. Okay, I've got the running stitch done all the way around, and I'm going to put the fiber fill and the SOS pad in there. And I'm just going to pull nice and tight.
Now it's all soft on the top. I'm just going to knot this in place. And if this seems too big for the can, there's a real easy fix for that. Because this is a little loose on the sides for me. I mean, I could have added more fiber fill, but... What I'm going to do is wrap this thread around and tighten it up just a little bit. a little bit of hot glue on there just to make sure it stays. But you can see how much tighter it got. And as soon as the glue dries in the can, and I've got this sitting in front of the fan and it's already starting to crust over, so it shouldn't take that long. But as soon as that's done, then we can get to decorating. Okay, this is actually dry. It hasn't cleared yet, but it is dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a ton of hot glue around the edge and down into the center to catch this part. And I'm going to try and work fast because hot glue does dry quickly. And then I'm just going to press this down in. Push it down for a few minutes until it holds. Now for something like this, I'm just going to add a little more glue. and press it over. And I'm going to do the same on this side. Okay, now it's time to decorate. And I had this left over from Christmas. So I cut a couple pieces because it's not wide enough to cover it. And I'm going to put some glue there. And I'm going to bring it right up to the rim. And it's not going to matter if it leaves a space in between. And after I get this on, I'm going to put the second one on down here. And I'll be back when that's done. Okay, I got this on. And there's a space in between. So I got out some of my other Christmas ribbon. And I'm going to put that right in the center. All the way around. Okay, I got that on. And if you have wider ribbon, that would be great because you won't have to separate it and fill it in. But I have this trim that's got uh, pearls in it. And 
I'm pretty sure I got this at Walmart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that along the top and along the bottom. And that way the red just peeks out, but it also helps to cover up the edges. So I'll be back when I'm done with that. Well, I kind of like this, but I think now there's not enough red showing. So what I'm going to do is take one of my ultra-thin red ribbons, and I mean this is tiny, and I'm just going to put this right in the center. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Kind of breaks it up, brings the red through, but for all intents and purposes, this is there it is all done. And it's ready to be used. And every time you put that pin in and take it out, it sharpens the pin. And I've made another version. This is one of my older ones. And this is the one that I made about 10 years ago. And yes, I use this every day. And it holds all my needles and my pins. And it sits, even the safety pins, and it sits right next to my sewing machine. Okay, and there's two different versions of the pin cushions. And as decoration for these, I'm using stick pins. Um, stick pins you can use for a lot of things, from using them for decorations to scrapbooking and cards and shabby chic and they are very easy to make and I'm going to show you how to make them in the next video. You'll be amazed at how easy it is. So if you like what you saw give it a thumbs up, subscribe and happy creating everyone.